Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show, I talk about TV shows that are crime dramas. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season three premiere of The Cleaning Lady. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So, obviously, I would be remiss not to talk about, obviously, the. Uh, Obviously, the dedication at the end of the episode, but I already went into this season knowing this. I mean, I only found out, like, probably like a week or two ago that, obviously, um, Adan Kanto, the actor who plays um, Armand, passed away in, in January, early it's January, um, for, what was it, uh, appendix cancer? So, I don't know what the structuring of the season's going to look like. I don't know if the, um, the circumstances of whether he did any filming at all, I, I, because I, I, I don't, I didn't want to look into it too much, because I'm like, for one, that's someone's private business, and I didn't want to dive into that, because it's not my life to be looking into. It, I, I get weird about like looking into celebrities. I try not to, and actors and stuff. Like your private life is your private life. It seems like his circumstances are kind of similar to like Chadwick Boseman and um, Norm Macdonald's in that regard. Of if you're unaware, I'm talking about both Chadwick and Norm were like literally very few people knew that they were both like dealing with cancer in their own respects as well and they just you know so it's kind of a shock in both cases and in this case like i said i only found out about adon like before the premiere because like i googled something related to the show like a couple like a week or two ago and then that was like one of the first things that came up but either way so i i don't i didn't watch the trailer because i wanted to know as little about the season as possible so i don't like i said i don't know enough behind the scenes stuff because i didn't really look into it about whether or not how much like he filmed anything or not or maybe he was going through treatment at i i, I don't know stuff like that so when they open the season because i was thinking like maybe he's going to be in a lot of the season because like i said i didn't look into a lot of behind the scenes so when we get to the opening well for one the opening is a, a media res thing where it's kind of like nearing the end of the episode is where the episode opens and then we rewind two days and tony is meeting up with armand to get on a plane that would help her get to fee and bring her back to the u.s but a shootout happens someone busts up the uh, situation because there was kind of a drug situation going on and the question then becomes like, did Armand know about that? Because he was arguing with whoever was behind the plane. So I'm like, they might have made that decision unilaterally. But it's like, this is Armand's operation. So there, there was some kind of hiccup or something. But by the time Tony show up, shows up, shots are fired. I was like, because once again, not knowing the structure of the season, I'm like, wait, are they going to like, like kill Armand off like in the beginning of the season or something? But I'm like, I, like I said, I just didn't know how much, um, Adon, like, filmed and stuff, sadly, before his passing. I don't know, like... Because uh, I think filming had wrapped before, like, obviously, like, before he passed. But I don't know, like, whether he was just not in a position to film anymore. Like, that's that's what I'm, I'm curious about, so... But, yeah, like, he's kind of... Like, Nadia showed up because she heard about the plane. And it's like, wait, Armand got a plane? Like, what's going on? She shows up, her and Tony get out of there. But they're both beating themselves up because it's like, Armand, we left him behind. Which I was like, is that what they're setting up this season? Like, the two women that love Armand and care about him a lot are basically who have... I mean, Tony doesn't have as much beef with Nadia as Nadia has beef with her. So, but it's like these two, like, people, like... Which is so interesting considering, like, they started off having a relatively nice relationship until, like, Armand and Tony became more of a thing and that caused a rift in Armand and Nadia's relationship. And now it's a situation of they would have to, like, join forces together. Like, they have to put their issues aside. Like I said, it's more so on the Nadia thing because Tony feels like the other woman in this regard and she does like Nadia and she feels bad for the circumstances being what it is. But it's like, you, Armand, it's like... You've got this complicated thing of you like him because he's been good to you. He's helped your son, so you're always going to be indebted to him. But you also kind of just straight up like him, too. So coming to terms with that, plus, like, the issue, you know, the complicated love triangle you have with him and his wife, it's it's complicated. So, but yeah, like, Tony, like, ends up breaking down because it's like, right, not only is Armand potentially dead or maybe something happened to him because I can't get in contact with him. Nadia can't get in contact with him. He was also our only means of getting um, Fiona back to the U.S. And it's like Tony feels the most responsible for that. It's like I'm failing Jazz and Chris. Chris already, like, does not like Tony right now. It's like because of all your BS, 
my mom got sent back to the Philippines and she might not be able to come back. And nothing Tony does is ever going to be good enough because for Chris, it's like your BS is what led to this. I mean, that's what JD didn't want her Fiona mix up in all of this because of that regards like yo you had to cut Tony out of your life and I, I figured that was even last season I was like yeah that's probably gonna lead to something and it did and now it's like this is the fallout of Tony's decisions and actions which obviously Fiona supports some of them the ones in correlation with Luca not so much other decisions so Tony's in this very rough spot or just like everything that can go wrong is going wrong like, it's not just only the joining of Nadia and Tony as they kind of search for Armand. Uh, it leads to us diving more into Armand's past, something he hasn't really talked about. Obviously, I feel like the last time Armand really got into his family dynamic and stuff was like, like that was probably season one. So we learn a lot more. We meet his parents, which he hasn't had a relationship with them in over like 23 years. His mom is like, we haven't seen him since then. She has a lot more like, concern and love whereas his father i think it's it's a pride thing of like i don't want to like he's dead to me because he chose uh what's his face over us and it's like he's been dead to me ever since so i don't want anything to do with him even when they find out like his mom is most concerned when it's like well like something happened to armana like you know please especially when tony's like your son is important to me because he helped me because even when they were talking to Nadia, I was like, oh, you don't even know that Nadia is his wife, do you? Like, because you haven't had a relationship in your son in like all that time. So you even know he's married and stuff like that. Um, but nevertheless, it's that situation of, you know, trying to paint Armand in a better picture. It's like, right, you might not like the choices your son made, but he has done a lot of good. But it's like, yeah, what good has he done? Oh, he's helped your son? Yeah, but he did it with blood money, he didn't he? So it's like the father standing on business and his perspective of, you know, I want no connection to that. No matter what my son does, it doesn't change the fact of the business he's mixed up in. So, but also like his mom gives them like this necklace that's kind of like a medallion on it and it seems like it's connected to a cartel because part of his family is tied to a cartel which is a, it's a side of Armand's family he hasn't really tackled or dealt with so it's like wait are they the ones responsible for taking Armand because it's like if he's still alive like he should be contacting us because even Nadia went to find like his go bag or like his passport and like phone but like none of that was touched so he never made it back to the like hotel or whatever to get that so it's like, where is he? Is he actually dead? It's like, does someone have him? Um, Tony, once again, trying to find the means of getting to Fiona because she's going through things, which we'll, we'll circle back to that in a bit. But she ends up talking to someone that she hopes can get her, get Fiona back to the U.S. But it's a smuggler named Angel, but Angel knows the cartel and kind of sets up. I mean, he sets up a meeting it's like, oh, this woman's asking about you, but it's also like, well, I'm taking all your money and I'm going to set up the, the meet, but like whatever happens is between you and them. It's like, you should, you know, you'd actually come to me to ask me about my, my, uh, rival business rivals and competition. But yeah, like who, like the cartel obviously had no idea about Armand because they're asking like Tony, like, how do you know him? And she's like, I'm in the cleaning lane. It's like, well, she wasn't lying. She just wasn't being fully truthful. It's kind of a white lie. But then it's like, oh, we know who you are. You're the doctor. So like, are you like, what's your connection to Armand? Like, are you going to hand him over to us? I'm like, oh, so you don't even have him. So I'm like, who the hell has him if he's still out there? He has to be. You know, because his body hasn't shown up anywhere yet. Not unless it's going to be a long season thing of you finding out. Nah, his body wasn't a morgue and it was just unidentified. You know, stuff like that. So, but ultimately, Tony ends up meeting the boss, which ends up being his aunt, uh, Ramona. Uh, she's like, yeah, like me and my brother had like a falling out. But at the end of the day, I never held it against my nephew. And she's like, in fact... I was hoping one day I'd kind of be able to pay him back and, you know, kind of have a bit of a relationship with him. So it's like, right. So Armand has no idea, like, his honest part. Because he has no idea about this side of his family. I don't think it's ever really come up. But maybe he does, but tangentially doesn't know that that's why part of his family had the fallout that it did. So, but, uh, yeah, she's going to put out fillers to help look for Armand. Because she was like, yeah, my people like busted up your situation in the desert because like I didn't know that it was Armand. If I knew 
that was him involved. I mean, we very different story. So, not unless she's keeping stuff from Tony, which I mean, obviously there are a lot of exchanges between her and her right hand man. So who knows? So there's that angle to it. Plus, a little extra uh, complication for Tony is that uh, a new social worker has popped up because she got arrested despite the charges getting dropped. It's like, ugh. And you also don't have uh, Garrett to help out anymore. Obviously, the FBI in general is not going to help you out anymore. Which I'm curious to see how much of an angle, how much we're going to see of their presence now that Garrett's gone. Because he was obviously like our main connect to the feds. So now that he's going, you know, we saw Russo this episode pop up confronting Nadia. And it's like, oh, we're looking for Artemon, like the whole shootout at that uh, hangar. Like, was he a part of that? And it's like, well, Nadia obviously, was on, in her own way, standing on business. Not, well, for one, she actually has no idea what Armand is, but she's also not going to work with the feds. And Russo did give her a car. It's like, oh, reach out to me. So I could see Tony going down the route of working with the cartel, but I could also see Nadia being like, all right, I'll work with you if you can help me find Armand. So they're probably, they're going to both tackle this from their own approaches and maybe eventually, like I had brought it up, like saying like, oh, maybe this will be the season they kind of come together and work together. But it's like they're working separately, but circumstances will probably weave their stories together to make them work. Who knows? She probably doesn't even realize that Tony took the necklace from her and uh, trying to look for the cartel and trying to find Armand. So we'll see where things kind of go on that front. But uh, circling to the situation with um, Fiona, obviously patiently waiting for Tony's plan, whatever it may be, to get her back to the U.S. But obviously, once again, that went sideways. She ends up running into an ex, which we find out ain't just some ex. It's Chris's dad. Now, I have not seen episode two yet. He's only in one episode, but that's, I was only looking at IMDb, so he might be more prevalent throughout the season. But I kept looking at that. I think the character's name was like Pablo or maybe Paulo. But I was like, why does that actor look so familiar? What do I know you from? And I looked it up. I felt so stupid. He's the actor, if you've seen the Kung Fu TV show reboot on the CW, he played Sebastian. I was like, oh my God, I feel so stupid. I was like, why do I recognize you? You look so familiar. Did not, I can't believe it was that. I was like, oh, I felt so stupid for not recognizing, uh, for that not clicking. To be fair, it's been like, what? Over a year, obviously, since Kung Fu got ended, well, more so canceled, but still. Um, either way, tangents and all that aside, um, she ends up kind of running into him and we don't really know what his connection is and things. I don't know if he's like uh, tied to the criminal world because later on people attack, uh, Fiona's house and in, in particular her parents cause they're looking for Tony because word has gotten out about Tony being a drug dealer. Cause obviously like drug dealing is like the Philippines is one of those like severe, like you'll be punished. But that's why I was like. They were, well, because to be fair, there's a bounty on her head, and obviously, like, her their house later on gets tagged, and there's, like, the word pusher, like, oh, she's a drug dealer, so, like, the drug dealing is, like, very frowned upon in the Philippines, but I think it's also, like, the criminal world is, like, oh, yeah, there's a bounty on her head, so we're looking for her. Um, apparently, like, this ties back to those doctors who they kind of threatened and manipulated to get what they needed to. Like, I guess they reported this to somebody and stuff's, like, popped off because of that. And now Fiona and her parents are kind of suffering the ramifications of that. But Fiona went to Pop, uh, like I said, I think it's Pablo, but it might be Paulo. Like, uh, went to him about, hey, like, people know you and respect you, so can you put word out? I'm like, who are you? Who is he to have those type of connections? And like I said, we found out he's Chris's dad. And it's like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, that's why their relationship ended so abruptly. Because she wanted to try and get Chris to America. Like, give him, like, the best chance possible. And it's like, yeah, like, I had to kind of rush to do whatever it takes to make sure he got to the U.S. And so that ended up being interesting. I don't remember if her, like, Chris's bio dad ever came up. Because obviously JD is Jazz's kid. I mean, JD is uh, Jazz's dad. But I'm like... I don't remember, and someone had to correct me in the comments down below whether or not Chris's dad had ever really come up in conversations before. It's also awkward, too, when you think about it. It's like, well, like, Marta goes, uh, died last season and everything, and Chris's involvement in that, and he's kind of working past that trauma, now being separated from his mom, 
and now he like found his way to the Philippines. Never really, he got started little details about it, but Fiona kind of was like, no, you can't be here. Like the fact is Tony can barely figure out how to get me back to the U.S. Now she's got to worry about getting you back. And she's like, I don't want to, it's like, oh, I'm reunited with my son. It sucks. I can't be with my daughter too, but at least she has her dad. Chris would have been all alone. And it's just like, after everything that went down with Marco, it's like, uh, Marco, you, it's just, it was one thing after another, but it's like, for him, it's like, I don't want to leave your side, mom. Whatever you're going through, I want you to know you're not alone. Whatever Tony does to get you back, I'm right there with you, which that's probably going to come with its own complications, too. Probably having two people, because that's going to get more expensive. Now you have to bring two people back rather than one. But there's also the thing of, like, anyone that's going to help bring her back is going to want her to do stuff. Like, Angel was like, no, she's going to do this for me. She can, you know, you can help lessen the price by having her bring stuff back. But Tony's like, no, we're not doing that. We've already kind of gotten her in enough trouble. We don't need to draw even more attention and complicate things even more for her, so... But it's like it's a it's a it's a there's a silver lining of Chris being there. Like she doesn't feel as alone. Plus, just ran into uh, his dad too, so might be an opportunity for those two to kind of cross paths in that capacity. Chris get to meet his dad and everything. So it's gonna be interesting to see uh, how much of the season does bounce back and forth. Like I would assume a good chunk of it. I'm sure Fiona and Chris are gonna be in the Philippines for a while. Maybe not. I don't know. Like obviously, I'm getting to this late. There's only. The second episode just came out last night at the time of recording this, so I'm curious to see where things kind of go on that front. But like I said, it's just, I don't know, this season's going to be interesting to see, like I said, the structuring of it. Like, once again, having no context of having, didn't read anything up about this season, didn't wa uh, watch the trailer, so I don't know what to fully expect, but like I said, with the whole Armand of it all, like, what his circumstances are in this season, like, like I said, did they ride around Adam Kanto's cir circumstances, or like I said, maybe he did film more than I'm kind of recognizing, but then it's also like, how do you handle it, like, it's, it's a lot of that, and I, you know, and it just, it's just, you know, a sad circumstances in general, it's just always like, gut punch where you're just like, oh man, I, I even said it during my watch or something, like, it's gonna make watching this season pretty hard, like, I'm gonna definitely need, like, some, like, uh, palate cleansers just to kind of not think about it because it's just it's sad but I mean I guess it's just I don't know getting one last thing with him I, I guess it's there's a silver lining with that like like I said it just depends on how much he's in this and um, I don't know any further talk on it's just going to get like uber depressing but I just you know I, I'm interested to see where the, the season goes how the story unfolds this season but uh, really, that's all I wanted to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and good.